Tradition is a set of guidelines that has withstood the test of time. We tend to take something that has been passed over to us with years and centuries of experience okay. uh, that in general meets our expectations of aesthetics. Okay. Um, and these guidelines, referred to guidelines by some, rules by others, yeah. basically define um, what, what is presented. Okay. How how performances are are presented, um, and these have come to be adop uh, adopted as the standard by which we present our music today. Today, yeah. So, is there anything sacrosanct about tradition? I, I, so, to build on that, yeah. I think tradition is is a constantly evolving concept. Okay. okay. Right. So, what was tradition? 300 years ago in terms of how music was presented mm -hmm. is different than traditional music, what we consider traditional music today. Even though they share some of the same elements, things have changed. Things that may not have been quite so popular maybe even 20 years ago mm -hmm. are popular today in music. So this is just referring to music in, in the sense of tradition. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, let me add on that. Like uh, when uh, Khayal, Khayal came into being, Drupad was uh, tradition. Drupad was Margye Sangeet when Khayal was not. Mm. Okay, then when Thumri came, then Khayal all of a sudden became very classical. Mm. Okay, so this is how uh, things evolved. Things, things that withstand the test of time began to get accepted as tradition. So which leads me to the next one. Are we in this generation capable of creating traditions which can withstand the test of time? I mean, I think only time can only time will be right? able to say we can come back as a and we have to experiment and mm -hmm. probably take some heat on it every once in a while. But unless someone does that, it's not going to happen. And what is the gray area between tradition and uh, innovation? Is it hard to innovate without uh, stepping on tradition? It, it is difficult, like it's a very thin line between, you know, uh, stepping on a tradition and innovating because what might be innovative to us might not be innovative to others, you know. So uh, you have to be really, really careful to follow the guidelines, at least in order to, you know, create or, you know, experiment with or innovating. And give it a certain amount of time yes, to be exactly. accepted. Absolutely. But I mean, innovation and tradition don't always have to be mutually exclusive. You can innovate without, you know, within the scope upsetting. of tradition. Yeah, yeah. Without yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, you can absolutely so do that. Resistance. What's the, what is the primary ingredient that is necessary for innovation? Doing something that hasn't necessarily been done before. So you need a certain amount of boldness within you to actually step out of your shoes. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of people that actually. So did I that. would so, like to okay, say here okay. before yeah. we experiment and do something new, first need, we need to have our basics. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The tradition. Yeah. So you need to, you need to be very sure what the tradition is to step out of the tradition. Yeah. Correct. You need to know the rules before you can break that. Exactly. Right? Okay. See, uh, let me give you two, two examples so, of so people that lived 200 years ago. Yeah. Before those two examples, if I can just add on to that, it depends on how you define innovation, right? So in our system of music, in Karnatic and Hindustani music, we learn how to innovate through the entire process of learning music, right? Once we learn the, the basic fundamentals of how our music is based in certain structures, we learn how to uh, improvise. We learn how to create. That is that is a process of innovation, right? And and we we always challenge ourselves to take that to the next level with, right. with every performance. So I I'm I'm gonna uh, put another word there. That's a process of improvisation, and you learn to innovate to take the improvisation process to a different level to give a different way of improvising and different uh, means of improvising and so on and so forth. For instance, the, uh, the uh, uh, singing of Pallavi in Ragamalika was probably an innovation. The, 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 the uh, Sankara Baranane, Arit Todiwadi, uh, Darbar Kalyani, right? That's, that's the Pallavi that Ariyakudi created in multiple ragas. But the examples that I'm trying to present here, Muttaswami Dikshita lived about 200 years ago. See, that was a time when uh, you didn't have the internet. Okay, you didn't have YouTube, you didn't have uh, iTunes or anything, and you didn't even have a radio, and you couldn't even travel on a motor car. You didn't have, even have motorable roads. I mean, he probably tra traveled on foot all over India. He spent five years of his life in Banaras. Okay, and one of the things that he did is uh, something unimaginable in those times, and uh, you may have an idea of what I'm talking about. What he did was he picked 39 colonial tunes that came with the British. And mind you, some of these tunes were played in taverns and bars. And he wrote lyrics in Sanskrit to 39 of these tunes. Okay? And he was a composer that was rooted in orthodoxy. 
Okay, but he created this completely new genre of music called the Notice for the Sahityas. I mean, what was in this a stellar example of innovation in those times? Okay, and that's one. And the other one is uh, Maharaja Swati Trinar. He didn't travel to Banaras, but he had musicians from North India living in his court who did things at his beck and call. And he created a to total of 39 compositions in Hindustani ragas. He refers to them as Hindustani compositions, okay? Because they are in, um, they are in Hindi, they are in use of a lot of Sanskrit words, and they are all in praise of Padmanabha. Uh, but they are, they are dhupats, they are khyals, they are bhajans, and stuff like that, something, something which is unimaginable, because the primary mode of composition in those days was uh, just the kriti. Okay. So he was actually able to step beyond his comfort zone and create something like that. And those have actually stood the test of time. Right. Okay. So the examples that you gave, yeah, like you said, have stood the test of time. But can't innovation be something that doesn't stand the test of time? You yeah. Can still See, I'm going to quote Bala Murli here. Won't. I'm going to quote Bala Murli Krishna here. He, he gave an interview to Shruti magazine back in the 1980s. And one of the things he said is that uh, innovation is that which uh, tradition is something that's, that uh, withstands the test of time. So the only way to, uh, uh, so he urges innovation. He says that innovation should never be stifled. Allow people to create. Create compositions on rasas that are not traditionally a part of Carnatic music. Because Carnatic, Carnatic music pretty much deals with the devotional rasa. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to get beyond that? Create, bring other multiple rasas into the field of Carnatic music. Write your own lyrics and so on and so forth. And he also says that this may lead to some mediocre music, but it's ultimately up to the audiences, to the people, to the populace, to decide what stays and what doesn't. It's almost Darwinian, right? So, what um, gets accepted stay, uh, withstands the test of time and stays forever. That's how an innovation becomes established as a tradition. Yeah, I think you were mentioning that Carnatic music is essentially a devotional... What was that? I didn't quite... No, the rasa in Carnatic yeah. music composition mm -hmm. is oh, primarily devotions. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah, but I guess the presentation is not necessarily that. Well, the presentation doesn't have to, it doesn't yeah. have to be at all. You can be a person with... You can be a total atheist and sing a composition and uh, try to bring out the best of what the composition is trying to do. But when you relate to the lyrics, what you create for the audience is different. And that's, we're going to bring that up in another panel discussion when uh, we, uh, where I postulate that if anybody can be a Vagayakara in his own right. Some of you will become uh, practitioners of music in future. Some of you will become engineers, doctors, and whatever it may be. And uh, just want to get a quick idea of what lasting contributions would, would you, do you think you would be able to leave in this field? Very quick answers to this. Something that stands the test Something of time. That stands yeah. Yeah. You'll have yeah. to come back as a spirit to find out if you <laughs> if it did or yeah. not, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, what do you? Who do you think are some of the greatest contributors to tradition? Uh, quick answers uh, in Hindustani music. I think Pandit Bhimsan Zoshi, like he created his own garana now. Like there are a lot of people who are following him. So I think in the current times, I think he is one of them. Okay. For the Kachari Padati format. For the Kachari Padati format, yeah. okay. Yeah, and uh, I feel that one of the greatest contributors to uh, Hindustani music is Pandit uh, Vishnu Narayan Bhatkande. Yeah. Absolutely. For Absolutely. having traveled from Gharana to Gharana yeah. to yeah. create a huge yeah. doc uh, documentation of the works. Okay, well, last question. Um, do you think the classical music-based ideas coming out of Bollywood constitute classical music or not? Can you give some examples? Uh, anyone from the audience? Classical music ideas from the uh, from Bollywood. Would you consider them to be? Uh, so he Akshay wants some examples. I'm sure anybody can come up with a lot of examples. A lot of they are one songs that are rather based. Yeah. Yeah, some of them are, are based on ragas, like you said, like Alabela Sajana. Yeah, I was actually humming that this morning. So, yeah, Mannavan Vandanadi in Tamar, in Kalyani. And this, this is so many things that you can think of. But uh, they would not find a place in Kacheri unless MLV had sung it in the movie or MS Subalakshmi had some, sung it in the movie. So mm -hmm. there's a kind of reluctance to use class, classically inspired compositions from the Bollywood front in the Kacheri front. And there's nothing right or wrong about that. My, um, like my contention is that, like what we talked about in the beginning, Carnatic music or Hindustani music is a very broad circle and a big umbrella which constitutes everything. So, whether the Kacheri paradigm accepts something, or the whether the Bollywood paradigm accepts the Kacheri or the or the Mehfil, Mehfil or whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. 
So uh, there is classicism everywhere. So and if you look at Balamurli, what Balamurli said again in 1984, I think, is that even a film song which survives the test of time can be labeled as a classical, as a classic. Classic. As a classic, basically. Mm. So that is what the whole thing is about.